No, Galvin, you star in The Real O'Neills as Kenny, who comes out to his Irish Catholic family at the start of the series. Uh, and this, first of all, the show was renewed for a second season, so congratulations on that. Uh, how did you find out the good news? Um, how did I find out the good news? Uh, I was with my sister and my best friend in New York City at the time. Um, and uh, I have a family group chat with my whole uh, fake TV family. And we were texting each other all day. We were sending each other videos of how miserable we were while we were waiting on the pickup notice. Um, and then finally, I got a call from Todd Holland, one of our executive producers, and uh, and he said, "I'm so sorry." And I was like, my my heart just like never dropped my stomach faster. I was devastated for a solid fifteen seconds, and then I was like, "We didn't get picked up." And he was like, no, I'm sorry, you're going to have to work with me for another year. And I was like, sick. And then I texted my fake family and nobody believed me. <laughs> they all thought I was playing a cruel, cruel joke on them. They thought you were playing a cruel joke on them like, like Todd Holland played on you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, this is uh, your first uh, big uh, starring role, of course. Uh, so how did the opportunity first come about? Um, I don't know, you know, I've done, I've been doing a lot of theater since I was little. Um, and I was sort of like the go-to little kid in New York for a while. I played about every small boy in every new musical that was ever in development in New York City in the past 12 years. Um, so I did a lot of that. Um, and then uh, about four years ago, I started auditioning for TV and film um, and like three pilot seasons in a row. I was flown out to LA to test for different different shows. Um, and so, you know, I initially auditioned for this show in New York uh, at ABC, and then they send the tape to LA, and then it goes through a bunch of hands, and then if they like you, they'll fly you out to LA to test. And I had gone to two tests in one day. One was for a Fox pilot, um, and one was for this. And the Fox pilot I sort of wanted more at the time, um, I was playing like this autistic kid who's very, he, he was more of a character, you know, and I was, I was really into that. And Kenny O'Neill for me was sort of like a younger version of me, you know, so it wasn't totally outside of myself. And I was excited for something a little bit more, you know, daring, a little bit more adventurous. Um, but I had my test for the Fox pilot and it's live. It's in front of like 30 people. You go into a room and you do it once and then you're out of there. And I had had, I had only done live tests. This was like the third pilot season in a row that I had done these live tests. And then I was feeling so crappy about it. I didn't think it went well. I, I've, I'm just messed up. I, I, you know, you could you just feel it, you know? And so I raced over to ABC to do this one, expecting to, you know, have to go in front of another room of like 30 people and be given one opportunity to nail it and and whatnot. And then I went into the room and they sat down with me and I realized that it was going to be on camera. So we had the opportunity to do it as many times as I wanted to. And Todd Holland, again, the savior, lovely sun goddess that he is, um, gave me the opportunity to do it like 12 times, you know? Um, I'd done a lot of theater, but I'd never really acted in on camera before so he made sure I had every little angle and look and emotional shift exactly the way he wanted and it you know worked out. <laughs> uh, you mentioned that uh, you know Kenny O'Neill is sort of like a younger version of yourself but uh, I'm, I'm sure the you know the life of a young actor is, as you have been uh, throughout your career is, is it has, it's different in many ways from the you know upbringing of, of Kenny O'Neill. Uh, what are are drastically different people. <laughs> what are the biggest similarities and biggest differences between you and Kenny? Um, biggest similarity, I think just the biggest similarity is that we're both gay, but I think the, the differences lie in like how we go about the world. I like to say Kenny is like definitely <laughs> a healthier, emotionally healthier than I am for sure. Um, uh, he's very smart. He's he's more book smart. I'm a little bit more street smart. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. He he has a very hard time holding things in and not sharing. You know, he wears his emotions on his sleeve. I'm very good at <laughs> I'm masking my emotions. <laughs> well, I guess you kind of have to be. I mean, you're, you're an actor, so you know, being able to control that and turn it on and off is a is is a benefit. Sure, sure. Uh, in addition to this being a uh, you know a huge obviously a huge career opportunity for you, uh, you know, has it been you know also you know daunting in any way to you know adjust to you know this a serious regular role you know front and center on 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 a show like this? No, like I said, I you know I'd done a lot of theater when I was younger, and I was like the kid that you know people would bring in for like the development of of a workshop or like the the development of a play. Because I, I, I was a very, I don't know, I had like a, from a young age, I was like carrying shows, you know? I was like, the my first leading role was when I was like 12, and it was this big musical um, called Ace the Musical. Um, and so that was something I felt was a skill of mine, that I could really carry a show, you know, be the lead and, and know how to set the tone and know how to, yeah, set the tone. Um, and so this, this, I mean, the most daunting thing about this, I'd say, is just like the, the schedule of it all. The actual acting of it was just fun for me. I just had a blast. But uh, the, the schedule is just so, so crappy. You, you know, in theater, you get to like, sleep all day and then you do the play at night and then you go like have a drink with your castmates and like gripe about the show and then you go home and then you sleep all day again and you do it all over again. Uh, but in TV, you know, we're working five days a week and because I not only like, uh, I'm not only like in most scenes, I, I also narrate it. So a lot of the time, and then we have fittings. And so a lot of the time you're just at the studio uh, hanging out, recording voiceover, doing, you're there, like, for me, in my case, I'm there pretty much every day, all day, and I'm waking up at, like, you know, 5.30, going to work, and you're doing, like, 12, 14 hour days, it's very grueling, it's very grueling, but, but it's great. <laughs> Uh, you know, the show is uh, produced by uh, Dan Savage, uh, and, you know, he's a longtime uh, gay activist and columnist, uh, and it's loosely inspired by his life. Uh, so were, were you familiar with his work at all before getting a chance to play, you know, kind of a, you know, a sort of version of him? Yeah, yeah, I was. Um, you know, I'd seen him on Bill Maher, and I'd read, like, a few Savage Love uh, posts. Um and my family is a bunch of like, you know, liberal Jews. So I was, he, he was, I was aware of him. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really like to think that I'm like playing a version of him or even like really playing Dan at all. Initially it really was that, um, it was called the untitled Dan Savage project. And my character was like super lanky and, and, and like skinny and tall. Um, <laughs> I'm not either of those things. Um, and then it sort of got reworked and, you know, I think people were afraid of the backlash we would get just for having Dan involved. And so I think they used Dan's story as more of a launching pad than anything. Um, and I'm sort of just playing a kid, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting, uh, you know, the story, you know, of the show starting to be developed, you know, Dan Savage, of course, is such a, a lightning rod for, for uh, uh, conservatives who obviously don't like him very much. And, uh, yeah, and, and the show was, you know, it was under fire, uh, you know, before it even got off the ground, people, you know, voicing, you know, saying we should boycott this show that hasn't been made yet. And when you actually watch it, isn't controversial at all. Uh, you know, so was any of that ever felt on set at any time or was it really just much ado about nothing? No, we didn't really feel it on set. Um, I think it was sort of like after we had filmed that it started to pick up um, when like our trailer was released and whatnot. Um, but these people, these people, like, most of them don't watch the show, which is, like, even more ridiculous. But, you know, whatever. Um, 
but no, it was never felt on set. It never affected anything that we were actually doing or any of the writing. Um, yeah, no, no, it never, it never, it never affected us, but you know, people, people would tweet at us and people would like write things on Facebook. The Catholic league took out uh, an $80,000 ad in the New York times saying like, shame on you, Disney, ABC. Um, and then about a month ago, the Catholic league released another statement that basically said like, well, the episodes of late have not been like that anti-Catholic and they chalked it up to like themselves. They were like, we like to think that it's our doing that Dan Savage has stepped away and has been so silent. And also that it's, you know, not as anti-Catholic. We like to think that's our doing. We're like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? We filmed these like six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, it's one of the interesting aspects of the show is is that you know not only does it you know deal with uh, you know Kenny's coming out and and the family's issues, but also you know really dealing in a in a serious way with uh, you know how being Catholic uh, influences their lives, and it's certainly not in in any kind of derogatory way. It's just sort of part of of their lives. Uh, you know, what's it been like exploring that dyna dynamic? Um, interesting. You know, I grew up. I call myself a liberal Jew, but I actually grew up half Catholic and half Jewish. My mother's Jewish, so I'm technically Jewish. But uh, my father is Roman Catholic, and his uncle, who recently died, was a Catholic missionary. And I grew up going to church every Sunday, going to CCD on Thursdays, Hebrew school on Fridays, and like saying my Catholic prayers every night before bed. You know, so Catholicism was a big part of my childhood. Um, and it's interesting to revisit that through somebody else's eyes, you know, revisit Catholicism through somebody's eyes who really connects with Catholicism. I didn't necessarily, but Kenny really does. And Kenny loves to go to church and he has a relationship with God that's represented on the show through, <laughs> you know, <laughs> an actor who plays Jesus. Um, but yeah, it is. It's a cool thing. Cool thing that we can like show kids, you know, who are in the middle of nowhere, who might be gay, that, you know, even if their families are super, super religious, you can still be religious and be a homosexual. They're not mutually exclusive. Uh, you know, it's interesting. TV has changed so much in the last 15 to 20 years uh, in terms of uh, LGBT representation. You know, the real O'Neills might have seemed, you know, radical 20 years ago, but we've gone from, you know, Ellen to Will and Grace to now, you know, shows like Orange is the New Black. Uh, so so what, what has it been like to grow up uh, during a period while television has, has been kind of in the upswing where, where that's concerned? Um, I guess it's been cool. I don't know. I, uh, you know, I grew up in theater, so TV wasn't really an outlet for me when I was younger, uh, like it is for a lot of people today. Um, I was surrounded by like intelligent, awesome, out gay men from a very young age, so I can't really say that the gays on TV uh, enlightened me much when I was younger. Um, but I think it's a very cool thing. And, you know, I, I, I of course, like, re I have respect for Ellen and, you know, her coming out episode and whatnot. It was a very cool thing. Um, and we wouldn't, you know, have been able to make our show if it wasn't for her. So, you know, I think it's cool that we get to carry on this torch. Um, and as much as it is, like, as much as people say, is, you know, is our show, like, as groundbreaking as, as, as it seems, or, or, or uh, people don't think it is a lot of the time. But what they don't realize is that our a network sitcom has never ever been narrated by like a young gay man before, and so it, it is groundbreaking. As as sad as that is, that it, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, it is it is a little landmark, which is pretty cool. And, uh, and, you know, your parents on the show are played by uh, Martha Plimpton and, and J.R. Ferguson, uh, and they both have, uh, you know, lengthy resumes in, in television. Uh, what was it like uh, working with them? 
<laughs> it was wonderful. I love them dearly. Um, I live in, I'm currently in Jay Ferguson's guest house. I live in his backyard. Um, and Martha is a, one of the smartest, most fiery women I've ever met in my life. She reminds me a lot of my family. Um, we both grew up uh, on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, like four blocks away from each other without ever really knowing each other until this process started. So, you know, we have, we have lots in common, not only friends, but life experiences. I've, I've learned a lot from them. Like I said, it was like my first time ever really acting on camera for a lengthy amount of time. And it was truly a blessing to have, you know, to be surrounded by veterans of that caliber. Uh, you know, since being cast on the show and now, you know, that you have a successful first season under your belt, uh, has the show had a, a big effect on, on your life in general? Yeah, I get recognized in Chipotle way more. Um, my Instagram following is great. <laughs> I don't know. No, I, uh, has it impacted my life? Yeah, I, you know, I'm like technically bi-coastal now, which is pretty cool. Um, my whole family's in New York, so, you know, I'm going there tomorrow morning. Uh, that's nice. But I think, you know, in a, on a serious note, uh, I'm, I, I was given this amazing, amazing opportunity to play this character um, that a lot of teens find relatable. Uh, and so on the daily, I get messages on Facebook and Instagram direct messages and, and tweets. Uh, just saying like, thank you and saying how, how cool it is that kids can now feel represented on TV, kids, kids in similar situations to Kenny. And that's a that's a very very cool thing. I feel very lucky. Uh, well, I want to congratulate you again on the show, and best of luck in the second season coming up. Uh, thank you so much for for talking to me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.